I mentioned it yesterday on the Hangout that I think that there's some there's there were more layers to this whole thing, and I mentioned on the Hangout that Doug Armstrong and Ken Holland are friends. Tight. And I wondered if this was a way to take a shot at the Oilers and for how they treated Ken Holland. And I mentioned that, again, on the Hangout. And Kyle Dubas obviously getting in on it because if we didn't catch it, it happened in the morning, there the was pick. the trade that helped allow these signings to occur or offer sheet signings to occur. So uh, it is an old boys club. Kenny Holland and Doug Armstrong are friends. Jeremy Rutherford in his article yesterday via The Athletic also made note of it. And then Strickland kind of uh, brought it to the forefront because he doesn't give two you-know-whats and will say whatever he needs to. And yeah. well, well done. He didn't tap dance around. No, it, so. I thought that was great. If, there, is, if Ken Holland was still the GM, he said, what do you say? I'm very confident to say that if Ken Holland was still the GM of the Edmonton Oilers, this, this would, would not, not have happened. happened. It's yeah. a respect thing. And what the Blues did is send a dagger into the midsection of the Edmonton Oilers, you know, figurative You're body, paying more you than will. more than double what you would pay for these guys otherwise. Philip Roberg is not a $4.58 million defenseman in the NHL yet. Could he be at the end of next year? Maybe. Like, not this year. Oh, but like I'm not two, limiting like at, him. At the end of this deal. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, I think so. Why, why, yeah, sky's the limit so, now. But like, you have to pay up for him to get there, right? Like, Will they pay up? Well, what do you think happens? That's what I'm wondering about. Um, we had Hart from Puckpedia on two guys yesterday. What did Hart say? And I was like, "What's the what's the plan? Like, how can they how can they make this work?" Yeah. And Evander Kane and LTIR trade CZ. Boom is done. That's what. Yeah. Uh, like you could do Simple. that. Um, Evander Kane on LTIR. Don't trade CC. Send down Brown. Stetcher. And Perry. Guys. Like yeah. Three guys. You have to send three guys down. To make it work. So there are there are ways for them to make it work. It would make things insanely tight. It's only feasible if Evander Kane goes on the LTIR. Which it sounds which, like he will. But are are they going to know that in six days? I think they do already know. Yeah. So it's going to be a thing. Indicators are they know. Um, well, if Evander Kane's going on the LTIR, then you, you, you match these. Yeah. That's it. Like, it's a tough pill to swallow. But yeah, I I think in a perfect you those guys you want on your roster not only this season but going forward they're supposed to be the next wave. Uh, they've shown some great signs. I I like both players. I was very pleasantly surprised with how Philip Broberg emerged. Listen, Broberg it has not been a clear path to full time NHL work for Broberg. He's had some false starts. Did not look good in the preseason last year. He did not look good at the start of the year. Last year, same with the prior season. And then he goes down, uh, plays well in the AHL. No more BS, I'm assuming, was what it was in his mind. And he just he started to play like the defenseman we thought he could be. And then he did it when he got his opportunity at the NHL level, and that's a great sign. So kudos to him. He dealt with the BS of his agent trying to negotiate a, contra or a, a trade or facilitate a trade. That did not go over well with Kenny Holland. Uh, I know that. And it kind of tarnished the relationship a little bit because it sounded like Broberg and Holland were had a very good re relationship, player to GM. And uh, the agent goes and does that. That's by all accounts, that, that's not good. Um, but they get over it. He comes back, has a good postseason. That's awesome. Dylan Holloway started to look like he was emerging, had a good showing in the playoffs. Excellent when he got called back up late in the season. We didn't think he would be a, a starter in the postseason, but he played so well in those last couple of weeks. He m forced the Oilers to keep him on the roster in the lineup for game one in that series against LA, and that was the right choice. And so these guys have value. And what the Blues did, well, within their right, does it piss off Oilers fans? Yep. Um, there's a lot of layers to this. So at the end of the day, I think ultimately Edmonton wants these guys back. The price sucks for them now. Yeah. But they left this thing wide open. And and in the beginning of the offseason, uh, I went on Calgary Radio a couple of times, and I got the question, will these two guys get offer sheeted by the Flames? Yeah, And yeah, I yeah. said no. And even if they got offers from the Flames, I'm sure they would laugh at that. The Blues is a different situation. This is a team that's not that far out of it, has some nice pieces. 
is is focused on winning. They have a plan that they've basically laid out to everybody with Alex Steen eventually taking over. They're much different than the Calgary Flames. Now, if the Calgary Flames pulled this off, what a coup that would be. Well, that would have been something But else. if you're Broberg and Holloway, you're going to a terrible team for the next five years. 